let's now apply this knowledge to the flights database, NYC flights data. Okay, so we're taking the flights data here, grouping it first by year, month, and day, which means for every possible combination of year, month, and day, we create a group, and then we're going to do summarization by that. Okay, so by day is what we call that uh, the new table, and clearly it shows that you have 365 distinct groups, which is what we expect, even though there were 336,000 odd rows in the table. All the data was from one single year, and it's for every day of the year, so we expect to get 365, which is good. Okay, uh, so it's telling you that uh, there are 365 distinct combinations of year, month, and day. Okay, that's fine, and uh, that, that's what the highlight is showing there. Okay, so now, we can take that by day, which is the, what, what we created, and summarize it. And we can say summarize by day. Delay is mean departure delay, may.rm equals true. We have to include this because there are some unknown values. And if you find the NAs, and you calculate the mean. Unless you remove the NAs, you'll get the result as NA. So that's why we say may.rm is true. And when you do this, you get, uh, obviously, one group, uh, one summary for every day. Okay, and that's what you see here. 2013, 1, 1, that is month 1, day 1, January 1. The delay was so much. Second day, the delay was so much, and so on and so on. Okay, so that's that's how um, this uh, is working. So this is just a similar application to what we did earlier. So now when you perform several dplyr operations in series, right? You're usually not going to perform a single operation. You're going to perform one operation. On the result of that, you're going to perform another operation and so on. So let's take an example. Okay. So let's group the flight data by destination this time, right? All the flights, the origin is one of the New York airports, one of the three New York airports. But the destination could be in several places. Okay. So we grouped it by destination. It's telling us that a total of 105 different destinations because we grouped it by only one variable destination and now what we could do is we could take that by dest which we just created and find out how many flights are going to each destination okay so we can say count equals n so when you use this notation n open bracket close bracket that tells you how many elements were in a group okay and then we're saying distance is the mean of distance so to every destination, you find out you're finding out how many flights are going there, and then we're calculating the mean destination to uh, mean distance to each destination. Then we are also calculating the delays, mean of the arrival delay, and again since we're calculating the mean, we have to say na dot rm equals two. Okay, so we are creating summaries by and we are calculating three different summaries for every destination. Since we have grouped it by destination, when we say summarize by destination, you get it grouped by destination. Okay. <clears throat> and now, uh, we are, uh, you know, since we'll get lots of rows here, uh, we are trying to take this summarized data frame, summarized table, and filtering out, uh, getting only those things which have a count of more than 20. In other words, what we are trying to do is to only look at destinations that have got at least 20 or more flights, right? We want to focus on the, on the important destinations, okay? That is in the whole year, there were at least 20 flights to that destination. And we are also removing the destination Honolulu because uh, distance-wise, that is so far away from uh, all the different other different uh, destinations, right? Otherwise, what will happen is when we do plotting and so on, uh, it's so far away that it will simply stretch out the axis, right? So we take it out and uh, we create a new filtered uh, data frame, right? So what we're really setting up here is that we are first creating by dest by doing a group by, then we are doing some operations by summarizing, and then we are taking the result of that and filtering, right? So here, what is happening is that we are doing operations in series, one after the other after that. So you can do this, but then you know you end up having to create all these extra variables like delay and by dest, etc, etc, uh, just makes the code a little difficult and hard to understand. There is a solution to this problem and it's called pipes. Okay. So let's look at, uh, first what we are trying to do here is simply plot 
uh, the delay right so we got the delay here we created that and we want to plot the delay so we are doing dt plot data equals delay and then uh, we want to see here if the delay has anything to do with the distance right in other words is it the case that flights that travel long distances have lower delays right? the hypothesis could be that uh, there is enough time to make up some of the delay okay so we want to plot it and see if that is indeed true then we are pointing the uh, we are uh, you know using geom point to plot every point and then we make the size of the point proportional to how many flights were there right to that destination right so you see some uh, uh, you know some counts are higher and some counts are lower okay so distance by delay okay uh, so that's why we say alpha equals 1 by 3 uh, that is so that to make it a little transparent so that overlapping points become visible like for example points here or certain points here and so on then you do alpha equals something it increases the transparency and makes uh, overlapping points a little more visible and then finally we plot a smooth line as e equals false so that's what is giving us this smooth line so clearly this is actually showing us that as the distance increases initially the delays seem to increase and afterwards, with the increasing distance, the delay is actually reducing slightly, based on the smooth value. Of course, everywhere you see there are values all over the place, but the smooth value does seem to indicate a little bit of a trend. Uh, the flights which fly longer distances probably have a little uh, extra opportunity to make up for some of the delay. Of course, they're not making up too much of the delay, right? So you see the delay here, this is in minutes. Okay, uh, So it's making up 5-10 minutes, that's all it's able to do. Okay, so now what we did was here we did several operations in series, right? We first created we first created this grouping by destination, then we summarized the group, then we filtered it further, and then we plotted it. Right? So we did several uh, several operations in series, and uh, they got the, the syntax of it got a little complicated. Okay, so now what we'd like to do is try to see if we can simplify the syntax here and you can do that by using this feature of uh, our dplyr called pipes okay so let's understand pipes so here what we're going to do is uh, uh, this is the pipe symbol percent greater than percent is the pipe symbol so what we're saying is delays forget that for the time being so we're taking the flights data frame and then using the pipe operation and then saying group by test okay that is what we are saying is earlier if you remember the syntax for group by was group by table comma test okay but when you use the pipe sign the variable before the pipe sign is automatically inserted into your group by right so effectively what we are saying here is uh, group by flights comma test okay because the flights that you have here gets put into this right so now this group by produces a certain result and that is automatically going into summarize okay so we didn't have to create a separate variable to store the group by like we did earlier we said by dest we didn't have to do that we are saying take this do the grouping take the result do the summarizing and then take the result right do the filtering right so you have the pipe sign here too right this was the whole this all these lines are the summarization lines you have the pipe sign here so you're saying take the result do the filtering and not all our functions work well with pipes you know ggplot is not fully compliant so you'll see that result shortly right so here you can see how it's very very intuitive to look at the syntax you can clearly see okay i'm taking this doing this right taking this feeding it into this feeding that into this feeding that into this right? that's what is that's why it's called as a pipe okay? so pipe symbol is percent greater than percent with no spaces in between if you use that then many operations where you perform operations in sequence, they become very easy to understand. Of course, effectively it's the same if you did it by the old method or the new method, but this is a lot more easy for somebody to read and understand. There is no need to create unnecessary temporary variables just for using it once. Okay, so that's the idea. Okay, so now you could do, uh, uh, earlier we did that, we did flights, uh, delays, and then we use that in ggplot. Now we are going to add ggplot also to the mix. Right? Uh, so here we are saying flights, 
a group by year summarize mean okay sorry the gg plot is not coming here it's coming in a later example okay so we are doing some of the earlier examples now with pipes right so we are taking pipes grouping it by year month day creating a summary of departure delay right earlier we did this in uh, three separate steps now we are doing it with a pipe and it makes it a lot simpler okay so uh, so here what have happened is that there are lots of cancelled flights right so we took the mean departure delay and it turned out that uh, the mean departure delay turned out to be na for many flights okay so that is happening obviously because we are including nas in the computational uh, delay so we could say mean departure delay comma na dot rm equals false right and then you would get the correct values alternately you could remove all the cancel flights because it is the cancel flights that have departure uh, delay as na right if it was not cancel it would have a value for departure delay could be zero right so we could remove the cancel flights so we are creating a, a, a table with not cancelled right and then flights and then pipe and then we are filtering it so we are piping together the flights and the filter and then we are create identifying non cancel flights by saying departure delay is not na that is not is na that is departure time is not departure delay is not na and arrival delay is also not na right so anything for which both of these delays have some values we say is not a cancelled flight so we create a not cancelled data frame uh, or table and then we group it by year and then summarize right in fact we need not have created not cancelled at all we could have just piped it okay so we could do that as well right so here we took the non cancelled grouped it by year month day and summarized it by the mean departure delay this time you don't have to put any dot rm equals true because we are considering only the non cancelled flights so that will work well too counts usually tend to go very well with summarization as this present example will illustrate okay so here we've got uh, we are considering again not cancelled flights and then we are grouping them now by tail number which is like a win number for a plane a unique identifier for a plane and then we are summarizing the mean delay okay so here essentially what we are doing is we are taking all the flights which were not cancelled and taking grouping it by individual planes actual individual aircraft and then we are looking at the delay of the aircraft okay delay of the flight which is basically to say uh, is it possible that specific actual planes equipment have more delays or not okay that's what we are looking at here so then once having done that we are doing a gg plot gg plot data equals delays which is just what we created and then on the x axis we want delay and we are creating what is called as a geom frequency frequency polygon it's like a bar except that it's with a line and then bin width equals zero so it comes out like this okay so clearly what this is showing us is that uh, you know you've got most of the flights which are close to not delayed right so the delay is zero here 100 here so between 0 and 10 minutes is where most of the flights are and then there is a rapid drop and then higher levels of delay there are some flights but very few okay but it looks like a little bit crazy because what's going on the flights having 300 minute delays okay that's like a 5 hour delay right maybe it's happening because of data errors or maybe it's happening because of some other conditions okay that uh, maybe the flight is rerouted it goes somewhere else lands in some other airport and is finally routed to the final destination maybe it's because of all of that that this is happening uh, so let's take a look at uh, some other scenario here okay so we are taking this grouping by tail number and then we are now finding uh, how many flights have the you know how many flights are involved in each of those things right so for example here we only got a uh, delay and the count okay now we want to do uh, you know count for each tail number how many uh, how many flights it actually had okay so that's what we are trying to do here and then we are doing the same thing x equals n right so uh, uh, how many flights on the x axis and delay on the y axis this time and we are doing a transparency with geom point alpha okay so now it comes out like this 
Okay, so what you're seeing here is when the number of flights involved is small, then the variability is very high. Okay, but as the number of flights involved increases, you know, it's possible that some of the planes are doing very few flights and some of them may be delayed and so on. So the variability, when the number is small, the variability is going to be high. But as the number increases, things average out and the variability reduces. Okay, this is a common trend that you'll be seeing. That is why you're seeing this particular shape here. The variability is very high with small counts and with the increasing in count, the variability is automatically decreasing. Okay, this is a very common trend in data science and we have to be very careful when we draw conclusions. We'll see another example of this shortly. Okay, so now what we are trying to do is here we are seeing this um, and here you see there is a lot of uh, stragglers here with very few, uh, with uh, you know very large counts. Let's say we want to zero in on the uh, on this main range, so we can do that. Uh, we, we have done that here with uh, zooming. Okay, so that's what we are seeing here is small samples have high variability. That's that same graph. Now we want to zoom into the uh, main region and ignore some of the tail parts. Okay, so the zooming in we can see here. Again, we are doing that and we are taking flights only with n greater than 25. Okay, uh, so uh, we are looking at that and then we do the mapping. Okay, so now uh, we see that uh, we have zoomed in on a region. So there is an expanded region here. Okay, so what's happening was this y-axis was highly stretched out because there were lots of uh, flights, uh, lots of things with very few flights, right? And that was sort of hiding the amount of variability that was here, right? So what we are trying to do is to cut off the parts here and saying, show me only flights that have uh, at least, uh, show me only those things that have flown at least 25 flights. So we want to cut off this part, this long initial part. That's what we are trying to do here. Okay, so that's why we said n greater than 25. So now you see that this long part has been cut off and we are getting a better idea of the variability. Here. Okay, and we are still using the alpha to uh, sort of get an idea of the overlapping points. You can clearly see that the density of points here is much higher than the density here. Okay, uh, so that uh, we're just showing you the technique for how you can zoom in on something with the filter. Right, so pipes make all of these things very, very easy. You just do something, add on something, add on something, add on something. Okay. Uh, notice also here that uh, there's a small trick that we have used. We have pipe, piped, and then we have piped it into ggplot. That will work well because the first argument to ggplot is in fact data, right? So that data argument will, will clearly go in here. But ggplot itself, when you're doing adding on various geons, unfortunately, you cannot pipe the ggplot to the individual geons. Okay, uh, so you have to use the ggplots plus. Okay, now they are rewriting ggplot so that you can actually pipe things to ggplot as well. Right, so this current version of ggplot that we are using is still not uh, compliant with your deep layer universe. Okay, uh, shortly, a couple of years down the road, I'm sure you'll start using percent here. That is the piping instead of the uh, instead of just the plus. Okay, so that's what we are seeing here. Now let's look another example to look at the same phenomenon. This time we're going to look at some uh, baseball data, baseball statistics. And uh, that data is available in a package called Layman. So you should install the package, install.package is Layman. And uh, the Layman package, uh, I noticed that I didn't do library Layman. Right here I'm just illustrating another technique that instead of doing library, uh, to get access to certain functions, you can always prefix the name of the object you're looking for with the name of the package. Okay, so instead of saying library layman and then as tibble batting, okay, batting is actually just a data frame. You want to view it as a tibble, so we are using as underscore tibble. Instead of doing library and then as underscore tibble batting, instead of that, we are just directly saying as underscore tibble layman colon colon batting. Okay, so if you use the colon colon uh, notation with a package, then you don't have to actually use the library command to load the package. Okay, but generally we would use the library command most of the time. 
I'm showing it here just for illustration. Okay, so now we are taking the batting data frame, grouping it by player ID, right? So this batting data frame or now the batting table has uh, batting information for, of course, many players in the league. Okay, so first we want to group it by player ID and then we want to summarize by saying uh, the batting average is summarize H. Okay, this is some information in the uh, uh, in the data frame. Okay, which is we are bringing it as it is, and then Na dot Rm equals true. Okay, and then divided by uh, some H divided by some at bat. Okay, so this is the batting average, which is H is number of hits. So sum of H becomes number of hits. Okay, and summer is sum of at bat, right? Whether the person played, uh, how many times the person was at bat during a game. Okay, so if you, so this is basically the number of times they hit and number of times they were at bat. So that is what we call as the batting average. So we have calculated the batting average for every player. And then we are showing here the number of times they actually batted at bats. Okay. So that's a good indication of uh, player performance really, right? So now we can go ahead and, uh, you know, of course we are now considering only those players who have been at bat at least a hundred times, right? So below that we are saying we don't want to consider that data. And then we are plotting at bat with batting average. So on the x-axis is how many times they've been at bat and y-axis is their batting average. And again, we do this uh, you know, in, to take care of uh, transparency, to take care of overlapping point, and then we also show the smooth line. So this comes out uh, like this. Okay. So think about the meaning of this. So this is saying your uh, at bat. Now we said we wanted only at bats greater than zero, but look at the scale. The scale is huge, right? Five thousand, ten thousand. So even if you consider those people who were at bat. Uh, more than 100 times, the points still look like this because 100 is somewhere here. Okay, so clearly you again see the same old trend of variability being high when the number of at-bats is small and the variability decreasing considerably as you go, uh, you know, as the at-bats increases, which is at-bat increase meaning that the average of batting average, the batting average is, uh, is computed over more, uh, more at-bats. Okay, so you see the trend. Uh, you also see another piece of information here, which is this graph is tending to slope upwards. That means as at bats is increasing, batting average is also increasing. Okay, why is that the case? That is obviously the case because who are the people who get to be uh, get more at bats, right? Who are the people who get to bat more? Obviously, the good players. So that is why you're seeing that. With increase in at bat, the batting average is also increasing, not because at bat is causing the batting average to increase, but it is because only those who are good will get to bat more. That's why you're seeing this particular trend. So again, I showed this example just to uh, illustrate to you the same concept that with low samples, variability is high. As you increase the sample size, the variability becomes smaller and smaller.